Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, November 14th, 2023. Let's get into it. So I wanted to talk about the theory that if your enemy strikes you, you strike them back 10 times worse. And I guess, in my opinion, that how you strike them back is the most important thing. So... I have made videos that my uh, opinion is that if you're going to strike back, you have to strike back against the armed forces of the enemy, not the civilians. Okay, because when you strike back against the civilians, you're creating much more soldiers, you're creating a worse environment for, for what you're trying to accomplish. And, uh, and I just see the Israelis committing suicide. And uh, so you might say, well, why is that that cybersecurity guy? Why, why do you think that? Well, I think that there's world opinion is coming up against them. The Arab world hates them. Hezbollah has escalated all of their activity on the northern border. Israel has a limited amount of munitions to be able to launch. Again. Well, and of course, they've, they're in their effort to effect collateral damage, because I've been told not to use the word genocide, on the Palestinian uh, city of Gaza. Of course, all the buildings are leveled at this point. Uh, how much ammunition do they have left to be able to fight their real enemies? If Turkey comes down, if Iran comes down, I mean, do you think that the United States, uh, with a few carrier groups, can uh, effectively fight a war, through a regional war in the Middle East? I just want to get into a few of my notes. And, uh, and, and, and this was the, the point that I was trying to make. Okay, your enemy comes at you, you inflict damage on them tenfold. Well, you don't inflict damage tenfold on their civilian population because that ain't going to do no damn good because you didn't affect the military forces. You did not take out their weapons, their munitions. You did not do anything. All you did was kill a bunch of women and children. All right, so let's just get into this. So, uh, uh, the Lin Lindsey Graham, I mean, my God, Georgia, get rid of this freaking rhino lunatic. Oh my God! All he wants is money from big money donors. I and, and I just I just and and I already talked about we're gonna have a broader regional war in uh, in well the Middle East. This is what the Biden. I mean, this is what the warmonger Democrats. The warmonger Democrats are engineering. Oh my God! Israel is killing itself. Their their position on the world stage. Nobody wants to talk to them. Their diplomats have been pulled out. Most of the Arab nations, there was, the, what was the four? It was the uh, Arab eminence. Uh, I don't even know. There was four Arab nations that, that voted against, uh, just go to total war against freaking Israel. Uh, so we have got an escalating exchange in the north with Hezbollah. You, you think Hezbollah is nothing to be trifled with? Oh my God. Yeah, okay. Israel won up against them and they kind of lost, I think it was back, what, 1973? And uh, then, uh, so now Hezbollah has, has been rearmed. I mean, they're what, the, like the fourth largest army in the Middle East? You think that, you know, uh, F 35 planes coming across? And guess what? Hezbollah has. Oh my goodness gracious, they have air defense systems. F-35s coming across there, I imagine they're going to get shot right out of the air. And guess what? They've got the equipment to take out some of those aircraft carriers if they can get them into position. You know, uh, just think about, let, let's think about back in uh, uh, Vietnam, okay, when the French were sitting there and they were down in that valley and they thought that the Vietnamese would never be able to take those uh, uh, freaking uh, artillery pieces. And, uh, and so all of a sudden, 
you know, they thought they were all safe and they were all superior. You know, they were the superior force. And boom, Vietnam opened up. The Vietnamese opened up with all those artillery pieces and they wiped the freaking French out. You don't think that there's people in the Middle East that are, are engineering stuff where they can launch torpedoes and stuff at the carrier groups? that are congregated in the middle of, well, down there, Cyprus, okay. Now, in Greece, oh my God, these people are so freaking stupid. And that's what, no one in the White House is anything but stupid. That's all I got to say. No one in the White House is anything but stupid. Uh, thank God, Millie, at least, well, I think he retired, didn't he? Of course, Lloyd Austin, uh, the great Lloyd Austin, you know, he's a freaking idiot. Oh, my God, the people we got in charge of our military are just stupid freaking people. So let's just keep going. I, 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 you know, I guess I'm on kind of a tirade. Maybe I just, I'll calm down. I'll calm down. I'll calm down. So we're uh, looking at everyone in the Middle East against the United States and uh, Israel. And that's, that's where we are at this point. Um, you know, and, and it's because of our exceptionalism. You know, the thing that we think that we're the exceptional nation that nobody can stand against, that we can, if somebody comes against us, we're going to inflict tenfold losses on them and, they, and there's no way they can retaliate. Well, the world has changed. And guess what? The, the war in Ukraine is just about to end. You know, I don't wonder. I, I wonder what the American people, you know, I guess they just kind of sit out there in their mushrooms and uh, they just kind of watch Netflix or uh, play their video games and uh, don't even understand the fact that, you know, we're just about to lose the, the war in Ukraine. I imagine, well, I, I, I mean, I, I hear a lot of, People saying that it might take another six months. I think it's going to be over in less than that. I think, it, it, you know, Russia's going to win and they're going to have the unconditional surrender of Ukraine. And what do we do? We spent $150 billion as the United States on Ukraine. For what? For what? Was Ukraine in the, in the, in, in the United States uh, interest? Did it make a damn difference to any person in the United States? Now, if you're a person in the United States, I want to ask you, please leave a comment below. What did Ukraine matter to you? I don't think it mattered anything to me. I, I couldn't give a shit about Ukraine. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, but, oh, yeah, well, Russia might come down through Europe and they're going to take over the world. Well, are they going to sail across the ocean and attack the United States? I don't think so. You know, this is stupidity, beyond belief, the neocons. All right, let's get back into it. So Iran and Turkey met. The world is uh, appalled. Even Well, the world is appalled with what's taking place in uh, Gaza. And uh, even Saudi Arabia met. I mean, they, they, they all, they all, all the Arab nations met. Do you understand? They all came together, but of course, four of them voted against, you know, taking military action, so we can, at least that was good. So, attacking, uh, well, and of course, yeah, now we've got our bases are being attacked in uh, Iraq and uh, uh, Syria. Okay, I want to ask you. Okay, I, I'm going to say a cuss word. I, I know that YouTube doesn't like this. What the fuck are we doing in Iraq and Syria? Bring the freaking troops home. And you know, now at this point, they all hate us. They hate the United States. They hate the Israelis. Uh, what's taking place in Gaza is, is, I won't call it a genocide. It's just collateral damage. Collateral damage is taking place in Gaza and, and so the Arab nations are getting pissed off. And so those bases, I, well, I imagine any American, I tell you what, thank God I'm not in the U.S. military right now as a United States Marine. Because I wouldn't want to be there because all them soldiers, they are going to come under fire. And they already are. They already are. And, uh, and so 
What support are they going to get? Oh, yeah, we're going to fly a few planes off of some carrier groups and come in and bomb some places. How long do you think before the, uh, uh, the air defenses that uh, Hezbollah and Syria and all of the nations around there, by the way, they do have air defenses. And right now they're just kind of sitting back and they're saying, okay, we're going to let the United States do what they got to do because we don't want to enter into a freaking full-fledged war with the United States. Guess what? I think that shit's going to, I think that shit's going to end. And eventually they're going to start shooting down our planes. They're going to start launching on our carrier groups. And, uh, and guess what? Then, then the whole freaking thing goes to hell in a handbasket. But let's just keep going. So the carrier battle groups are at risk. Uh, and, and by the way, how much ammunition do you think the carrier groups have? You think that, you know, what, what are we going to fly uh, freaking bombs and, and, and torpedoes and uh, tomahawks over from, from the United States uh, on some sort of, uh, or we're going to uh, take ships? And by the way, the Russians have submarines. They can sink anything that we come across the ocean with. So what the hell, how are you going to resupply the carrier groups once they run out of ammunition? And, and this is a point that I've been making, is how long do you think before Israel runs out of ammunition? In their attempt to be basically just exterminate the Palestinians with all of their bombs, and they're dropping them by the thousands every freaking day, you know, how, how long do you think before they run out of ammunition? And then, what are they going to do when Hezbollah comes out from the north? I mean, the, the stupidity of all this is just beyond belief. Holy shit. All right, so let's just keep going. So Russia was weak, but Ukraine is done. Okay, so that was the, that was the neocon uh, excuse for starting the war in Ukraine. And I, I encourage you to, I, I, I'm not going to even get into this video, but there, was, there were peace arrangements that could have been made. Uh, Ukraine could have retained its military, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, there was all that the Western nations came across, the United States especially, and said, Ukraine, we are not going to accept peace uh, with uh, Russia on any way, shape, or fashion because they're weak and we think that you can defeat them. Well, guess what? Oh, my God, what are the American people going to say in, what, two, three months when, uh, when the war is over and uh, Russia has won? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, are we going to go to nuclear war? Is that what you want? Is, you warmongering Democrats? You warmongering Democrats? You freaking lunatics? Is that what you want? All right, so let's just keep going. Oh, goodness. So the populations are raised in war with Iran and the United States. I already talked about that. So we have no, no sane people in the United States government. None. I mean, the CIA has gone rogue. Uh, the FBI has gone rogue. I mean, what the hell? Who, who, in the, who in the United States government under the Biden administration is going to uh, get some sanity about what's taking place in the world? I, I, I'm going to be shocked. Of course, and the Russians now say they're going to, uh, go ahead and start doing nuclear testing because we have no nuclear treaties. There's no nuclear treaties anymore. We used to have nuclear. I mean, I'm, Robert F. Kennedy, look back at, in your history. He established the, the framework for us to have some nuclear deterrence between the Soviet Union and the United States. And now there's nothing. These neocon lunatics like Lindsey Graham, Mittens Romney, Mitch McConnell, and I, those are the three Republicans. There. And, but the entire Democrat Borg, I mean, they want war. 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 That's what the Democrats want. Holy shit. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I think, I just, anyway. So now we get back to the Gaza hospital. And, 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 what does that look like to the international world? Okay, there Israel is saying that there's, uh, uh, you know, Hamas tunnels underneath the hospital. 
So does that mean you just bomb the hospital and kill all the babies and the women and all the... I mean, I, I'm going to tell you, I've been a hospital patient, and you're laying in that bed, and imagine a bomb drops on top of the hospital, and, you know, you're, you're very vulnerable at that point because you're dependent on your nurses and your doctors and everything that they bring to you, and now you're under rubble. What are you going to do? You're going to die. That's it. You're just going to freaking die. Okay, and so that's what Israel is doing. And so why does the world look on that? Oh, because there's Gaza tunnel, I mean, Hamas tunnels underneath the hospital. So that gives them the right to kill all those fucking people. Hell no. What you do, what you do is you go in and you say to the international community, we want inspectors to go into the hospital. And if Hamas... And see, this, this is where you can get international opinion from the world. If, if the guys and shoot the inspectors coming into the hospital to see if there's tunnels underneath the hospital, then guess what? They're the bad guys. They're the bad guys. But no, if you're Israelis and you just freaking fucking blow up everybody in the freaking hospital, the Israelis are the bad guys because who knows where there were tunnels underneath the hospital. I, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm just, this, this, this whole thing gets crazy. And then uh, Israel, with the backing of the U.S., wants to whip, whip, wipe everyone out and the Arabs unite. I don't know. All I'm saying is Israel's committing freaking suicide. If the entire Arab nation comes up against them, I mean, yeah, we're talking Turkey, Iraq, Iran, uh, Egypt, I mean, I, 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 maybe even Saudi Arabia, I mean, <clears throat> well, I guess I'm just a nobody. Peace out. Stay free.